Hello everyone. Just a quick video here on the five key chemical food tests uh, that come up in the human nutrition topic in IGCSE. Now I have done a, a video very similar to this earlier on the channel where I've just looked at four of these and quite basic and that's aimed primarily at key stage three students. So this one's in a bit more detail. So we're looking at five food tests in this one and the one we're going to start with is the reducing sugar, the test for reducing sugar. Now you're not asked at this stage what the difference between a reducing and a non-reducing sugar is. We're just going to refer to this as a reducing sugar. I have done uh, a video on reducing and non-reducing sugars, but that's an A-level video, so not required for this one. So the test for reducing sugars, and that involves something called Benedict's reagent or Benedict's solution. Now one thing that we could uh, just say is that if we have a, a pestle and a mortar, which we may have used uh, in biology, and we've got a food source there. That we can crush that down, and we can add an equivalent amount of water to that. And from that mixture, we can take, let's say, about two centimetre cubed of that, and add that to a test tube. So that it is possible, if we've got a, a solid sample and we want to know if the reducing sugar is present, we can take it, crush it up in the pestle and mortar and add that uh, mixture, that with water, to a test tube. But just for simplicity, I'm going to imagine that we've got liquid samples. So we've got liquid samples for these five tests and actually in uh, school when you do this as a practical, it's probably easier to just use liquid samples of uh, food substances and test for these five things. So let's say that we've got to this stage, we've got a test tube of a uh, sample. Now what we want to do is add to this two centimetre cube, roughly, so we're going to add about two centimetre cubed of something known as Benedict's solution. So we're going to add Benedict's solution to this sample. But then what we need to do is take that and place it into a water bath at a minimum of 70 degrees Celsius. So we're going to set up a water bath here. We're going to place our tube in and that tube has had Benedict solution added. And we've got water that's roughly at 70 degrees C or more and what we're doing is looking for after about three minutes or so a color change now we get a color change from blue ultimately to what's called brick red that's what we're looking for and that is a positive result a positive test for a reducing sugar so we're looking for blue to brick red but Low concentrations of uh, reducing sugars actually show other slight colour changes. So, for example, you actually get the blue um, turning slightly green if you've got a bit of a small concentration, and then that green along the line can turn yellow, and then we get brick red. So you get this kind of uh, phases of this colour change, but a good, a good uh, sizable concentration of reducing sugar will give a brick red colour. And that's the test for reducing sugar. So now let's consider the test for starch. Now the test for starch is using iodine solution. Now at A level you call it iodine in potassium iodide solution. But again that's more technical. We're just going to refer to it as iodine solution in this. So let's imagine we've got a test tube again with a food substance and we want to know if there is starch present what we're going to do is add to that a few drops of what's called iodine solution now again we're looking for a color change now the color change that we're looking for is a sort of yellowy brown and that's the colour that the iodine solution is to begin with and we're looking for a colour change to what's described as sort of bluey black colour so we're looking for something a bit like this a sort of dark bluey black and that 
is a positive test for starch. So we go from a yellowy brown to a blue black colour. And that is a positive test for starch. So let's look at our third one. And our third test is one for protein. And for that, we're going to use the Bure test. So once again, we're going to imagine we've got a test tube of liquid unknown sample. And we want to see if there's protein in it. Again, you could use the method I've said with if you've got a solid sample, break it up with a pestle and mortar and add water and then get some of that mixture. But we're just going to pretend we've got an unknown sample here. And what we want to do is test for protein. So we've got about two centimetres cubed again. That's a good, a good rough amount in a test tube here. And we're going to add to that about two centimetres cubed of something called Bure solution. Now Bure solution is actually just alkaline copper sulfate. Now you may be asked to make this up yourself. But typically when doing this full practical in school, you'll get just a ready-made Bure solution uh, given to you. And again, we're looking for a colour change. Now this time what we're doing is looking for a colour change from a blue colour, a light blue like this, into a very, very noticeable change to a purple, sort of purple lilac colour like this. And that is a positive indication that protein is present. So we're looking for, again, a colour change. So all the ones we're referring to today in this video are about colour changes. We're looking for a colour change from blue to purple to indicate that positive result. Now let's look at the lipid. Because in a previous video I've said that you can just rub a sample of food on uh, sort of translucent, on, on paper, almost like greaseproof paper, and it will go translucent. But that's a very basic test. The one we're going to look at is something known as the emulsion test for lipids. And when I say lipids, what I essentially mean are uh, fats and oils. So we'll just make a note of that just so we're clear. So I'm referring to fats and oils here in this test for lipid. So once again, we start with our... Test tube, unknown sample. Now this is very, very key. The order of this um, often comes up in the exam questions. You can be marked down if the order is wrong. We're going to first of all add two centimetre cubes of ethanol. So the first thing we want to do is add ethanol. Now what the ethanol does is actually dissolve the fat or the oil within that uh, sample. So we want to add ethanol first. Then what we want to do is shake. We want to shake that mixture up. Now once we've shaken that mixture up, the only thing left to do is to then add water. Now, when we add water, what you get is a cloudy white emulsion forming if lipid is present. So what we're looking for here, so what we're looking for is a cloudy white emulsion forming. And that is why this test for Lipid is known as the emulsion test. So we add ethanol, shake the tube, and then add water. We get a cloudy white emulsion forming. So that only leaves the test for vitamin C. Now what we're going to use here is a chemical called DCPIP. You don't need to know what that stands for, but we're going to use the chemical DCPIP. So what we're going to do is we're going to, again, take our tube and we're going to imagine the food to be tested is a liquid in this instance so we're not needed to make an extract so we've got our test tube with our sample and what we're going to do is add one drop at a time of this chemical that I said was called DCPIP so we're going to add this DCPIP. 
Now this DCPIP solution is actually, when you see it um, the first time, is actually a light blue solution. So we've got a blue solution here. That's what DCPIP looks like normally. Now what happens is that when you add that to a sample that's containing vitamin C, the vitamin C actually decolorizes the DCPIP. So if it's just drawing a kind of circle there, you can see it's just colourless. That's why I've left this circle empty in a way. So the decolorization of DCPIP shows that vitamin C is most likely present. And the greater the rate of decolorization, the greater the concentration of vitamin C. So in this uh, picture that I've drawn, we've gone from like a fully blue circle to a clear white circle. So that would be a very, very high concentration. If, however, though, I had something like, I don't know, this. You can see it's much, much a lighter shade of blue, which would suggest vitamin C is present, but in low concentrations. So there we have our five key chemical food tests that you need to know about for IGSE. We're using Benedict to test for reducing sugars, or Benedict solution rather. We're using iodine solution to test for starch, Bure solution to test for protein. We're doing the emulsion test where we're adding ethanol, shaking the nut in water to test for lipid or fats and oils, and the decolorization of DCPIP to test for the presence of vitamin C. Okay, hope all that helps.